And now from the wiles and the wisdom of Alberta in uh, North America, Canada that is, I'm delighted to welcome uh, to these shores once again Dr. Alicia Troughton, the artist, the, the, the person who has created the Linen Memorial, 400 linen cloths with 10 names on each, names of those who perished in the troubles in Northern Ireland. Lisa, you're welcome back. How it's are you? It's great to be back. Good to have you here. What happened to the beard? What happened to Santa? Ah, the, the, the beard is there for the wintertime only. only. It has a function to perform in the storytelling role that raises funds for some charities or other. But that's well, winter. Great haircut. Good haircut, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I was down in Spain for a while. And, and you got a little sunshine. Yeah. How, I started by asking you questions. Now you're interviewing me. This is incredible. Carry on. You're, the, the Linen Memorial thrives. It's going places. You're, you're invited into yes, Stormont. Yes, I haven't been in Alberta for quite some time now. Yes. And, uh, but I was over in London doing some Chinese uh, art studies. And here I am back to mainly get the memorial to uh, its next location, one of the official locations, and that's the Long Gallery at Stormont, yes. Significant to say that it's a, a cross-party invitation. It is. Uh, a number of parties there within Stormont have said, please come bring the memorial here, we wish to see it. And yet under the auspices of Mike Nesbitt's office, one person has to be the sponsor. He has to fly point, and it's Nesbitt. That's right. So. And why wouldn't he do it? He worked with me in the BBC, and we have a good friendship going on there. And he did very well in the elections, and uh, as did the other. Sinn Féin people do well. The unionists are growing all the time. The DUP do well. But you're beyond politics. That's important to say that, because the suffering of Northern Ireland through the worst of the troubles knew no political barriers. It, it affected everyone. Well, unfortunately, there is a democracy in death. And uh, so the memorial is a chronological names list from 1966 to 2006, which is about the fifth or sixth edition of Lost Lives, which was the scholarly names list that I used. There are a number in the public realm. Uh, they were stitched. Uh, took many, many years to stitch it, so I want to thank the embroiders who will probably only be watching on the web. Yes. I hope to have one or mm. two of the embroiders at the event. But yes, uh, those who committed some crimes would be on uh, the same cloth in a way. Yeah. 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 It's not, we're not saying it's a, a memorial to victims. We're saying it's a memorial to those who died. Yes. And there are perpetrators and victims there as well. Everyone who uh, was documented as a sectarian death. Is there, yeah, yeah. So You've been, I first came across the memorial maybe eight years ago up in Corimila. You did, that was the first day of reflection. And mm. I should mention that this is the 22nd, it's the day after the day of reflection, but we're coming up to the longest day of the year. It's midsummer. Uh, it was a time chosen by the Healing Through Remembering subgroup, the day of reflection to be an appropriate time mm. to reflect on the conflict and as a result uh, of the almost 4,000 who uh, are no longer with us and there are different ways of reflecting on the conflict but this is how I did it as an mm. art form, a soft sculpture. I mean I started out as a sculptor in earth art, uh, I have done some bronzes but it's not concrete, it's not steel, it's not bronze. All the bronze you can touch as well. This is a touchable, perishable mm. material, but it's eternal. And Northern Irish linen is so iconic mm. to this place. So I, I've been carrying it around in a suitcase from country to country in some mm. ways. And um, it's nice to be able to keep showing it. In fact, for the year after the, the Day of Reflection, uh, BT-14, which is North Belfast, uh, the Survivors of Trauma Center, who have a memorial room for their, the victims in that neighborhood, are going to keep it in the form of like a book. Uh, yeah. Like you can lift the pages over, you can turn the pages of the handkerchief, and of uh, mm. the handkerchiefs. Of course, we haven't seen it that way in, in these different contexts. And perhaps mm. Andrew will put up a picture. It's 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 flowing. It's like a drapery. I think of it mm. as sails. I mean, I don't know if you sails of a boat. Uh, we've moved on yeah. uh, ten years, ten almost ten years now. Well, do sails you, drive think, a boat. Sails drive a boat forward. Your linen memorial in some way. 
seems to be moving us along the, the timeline towards peace. Peace isn't something we get. Peace is something we arrive at having worked at it, and you're part of the process of working on it. Do you sense well, that? Well, I hope people see it that way. Mm. I mean, when you saw it with me at Cory Milo, when I first saw you in, uh, do, in the role of Nationwide, yes. you know, how do you see it these seven years on? You know, that the day of private reflection has become the day of reflection, for example, mm. even that, you know, that it's now a sort of public day. I have seen it, you ask me the question, I've seen it in churches. I've seen it in the Dominicans in Yori. I've seen it with the Presbyterians in, in Warren Point. I've seen it with the Presbyterians in Bestbrook. I've seen it with the Church of Ireland. Uh, I've Best seen. Bestbrook was cross community. It was cross community yeah, there as the well. After the carol service yeah, at Christmas time. At Christmas time. there, yeah. What I have seen is the effect it has on people. People come to it, and as their step approaches, they 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 slow down. They become more reverential. They look at it and approach it with a gentleness and a reverence. Mm. And they look and they search, and there is a whispered exclamation every so often when they find someone they have known who is gone. It is a kind of a puzzle piece in that way. There is some process of searching for a name uh, and looking at the book and then going back to a name that enables a type of grief process. Mm -hmm. And they say that uh, for a sudden death, you had a pastor on this morning who talked about um, going into the ministry mm -hmm. because of a sudden death. If it's traumatic and sudden, we need these slower processes. In my understanding from what I've read, although we knew seven people, but uh, living over in North America, we were somewhat at a distance. Uh, you know, where you can obsess on the details until finally, finally, maybe, you know, this loss gets incorporated in your life. And of course, it's always there for some of these Does there people. come a moment when the Linen Memorial has outlived its usefulness, that it has delivered us to the point at which it was intended by the great maker of the worlds to, to deliver us to. That point where we no longer need to reflect and to remember that we've done that and that we need to cut ourselves free from it like a Buddhist prayer flag, allowing it to disintegrate and the prayers of intercession and hope and peace go up from it. I think you're right, this kind of lifting of the weight of the troubles, lifting of the burden, you know. It, it seems to me to be getting lighter, to use that metaphor, like a, a, a scarf that's getting more filmy, you know, because, or a tea towel that all the washings and all the ironings have made it thinner over the years. It's just uh, what we live with, isn't it? I mean, kids who are in their teenage years in Northern Ireland wouldn't know what, what you've troubles known, they would what say. I've known. What troubles, what troubles. I haven't seen any. They would say that, they would say that. But it, you know, as, and that, but as you know, you know, mm. co there's controversial deaths that are still being investigated. There's uh, inquiries, there's, you know, Northern Ireland is still living with a yeah. post-conflict legacy. Yeah. But that's and, not what you're about. Uh, no, I, I'm not a you, you stand, politician. You stand there pure and strong. You have the work there. And it's a work that has been brought to Northern Ireland from the world, but also manufactured uh, for, for Northern Ireland from the world. Because the women of the world, throughout the world, came and they, they embroidered the names into it. Where did that concept come from? <laughs> There's a number of women artists uh, since the 60s who have done public uh, projects that are needlework based. And mm. so it's something that uh, allows me to not have to cite the piece. Cite meaning, you know, find a place for it, find a park, find a, a particular wall. And we know those places are important for people to walk mm. through and be in um, or with their particular community of victims, you know, uh, there's this issue of hierarchy of victims in, in Northern Ireland, but yeah, it doesn't have to be um, cited, and it's moving around. Oma, the Oma Library is interested, and uh, I am preparing a DIY manual. You know what DIY is? Oh yeah, to find, how to find your loved one in it, how to find the person who's gone, taking you into the point you want to be. Well, 
Yes and no. Yeah, there's that, uh, but there's also a do-it-yourself manual of you can borrow it from oh. a place, mm -hmm. and you can put it up yourselves with some Excellent. volunteers. Yeah, yeah. And that's the next step, you know. Um, there's something about it coming to your community that's different yeah. than the long gallery at Stormont, you know, with official, mm. you know, not quite teas and sandwiches, but, you know, um, refreshments, obviously, but that's an official space. We are having some Samaritans there, some listening ears, uh, some church leaders. Have you found that necessary? Yeah, mm. because it's, you've had uh, people with listening ears at other locations. Are people leaning on shoulders as they view? I think they are. They really are. They're, if they come with a friend or a family member, they're sharing. They might be sharing it on social media. I've had people bring out their tablets, show me their phone, tell me about, not quite their tale of survival, but mm. yes, you know, it's uh, so, uh, but as well as each other, you know, mm. I think it is important to have someone there from your community mm. or who knows about trauma. Yeah. I mean. It's certainly resonating with every church door you have walked through. The Dominicans, they welcomed you. They thought it a great gift that you would bring it there. And there it was kind of, a, you know, I hate to you know, reference the, the Our Lady's, Our Lady's uh, the altar. altar to yeah. the prow of a ship, but that kind of, um, we're talking about lifting a lot today and mm. uh, you know, moving into the future. Do you think it's a shared future? I mean, you're the sociopolitician here. I believe we are increasingly in a shared future. We're, the people. We're getting rid of the, the, shack, the, the shackles of the past. Yeah. And that, that seems to be occurring. But we, we, we make haste very, very slowly. And uh, Bitterness and hatred are, are, are hard, to, mm. hard to lift. Uh, I mean, when I shook the hand of uh, someone at Breastbrook who had been shot, you know, mm. it's quite something, you know, to think the heart can be used for hatred. It's, it's really hard, especially someone who grew up in Canada, although is born here in Belfast. You know, how do we move closer to each other while accepting our differences? Mm. It's well, it, it, they tend to do it in other parts of the world, in other more civilized parts of the world, but, but they replace that with other kinds of maladies and other kinds of difficulties, uh, the blatant racism in, uh, in America still and things like yeah. that. So there is no perfect formula for the, uh, the wonderment of a truly perfect humanity. It's interesting you bring up America because one of the featured guests at uh, Stormont is going to be Paul J. Miles. You can Google him. He's, he's no, Detroit. He's a singer. Yeah. Yes. An award-winning Detroit blues singer. And my he's, goodness. Uh, he did an original song for my memorial at Corimila, actually. Yes. Uh, and I mean, several people have contributed. Dancers, uh, mm -hmm. Thomas Fitzgerald, a musician. Uh, composer, uh, but Paul will actually be with us, and mm. well, he's as well. He's got a gig uh, in Dundalk Spirit Store. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, down in the docks, and that's on his website. You can Google that, and uh, that's before or after. Uh, I think he's coming out from the south and doing Dundalk mm. anyway. Uh, so he's been in Ireland before, but he's really pleased to be doing something for peace, mm. you know, for civil rights. I met him in Detroit. I had three years in Detroit in my master's program for sculpture. Mm. And what a city. It's like Belfast. It had a high interurban migration during the civil rights period. Mm. People fled to the suburbs. Um, you know, and that's been analyzed by academics and sociologists and mm. And, you know, certain places here would be very much the yeah. same way. So he understands the situation yeah. from an American point mm. of view. Staying with America, that uh, great Irish capital of America, New York, that's the place you haven't been. That's the place the Linen Memorial hasn't been. Are you surely New York, something? Surely New York is crying out for this. St. Patrick's Cathedral, somewhere that the Irish-American people who have been intimately involved in all of this, they've been used, they've been abused, they've been, they've been used for funding for the troubles here, they've been used for peace for the troubles here, to, to bring us to an end of the, the, the difficulties. Surely, surely they, would, 
they would grow in the experience see, of seeing see. it. Yeah. There are two uh, American uh, writers who've written about the piece, mm. Carol Russell, and she couldn't be with us this uh, June. But yes, there is definite interest over mm. there. And I know um, some exhibits about the Troubles. I think there was one from the Linden Hall Library mm. went out. And, mm. and, and there's other people doing this kind of work, as I say, Sometimes it tends to be women who are interested mm. in textiles. I did have one man sewing. He was a psychologist. And certain um, people in quieter professions kind of understand mm. uh, the, the nuances of the piece. But uh, let's let's see. That's a good yeah. idea. Australia, I know, would love it back. Yeah. There's going to be a names reading off mm. the Irish diaspora from Canada and Australia. Mm. It's pre-recorded in a small ante room. And you have to tell me if you're going to catch the bus from Newry because it's a 9 o'clock to 4 p.m. bus. And I have to put the names down. I've got to put the names down for security. We had that problem the other week. So when so. do people need to contact you by? June 12th. And you have to tell me if you need a sandwich by June 12th. <laughs> also, Suzanne at the Hub is taking names for me. You can go to your own church, the Dominican Warren Point or Church of Ireland, and you can tell one of your... Uh, the central member there, uh, you'll know who that is. And um, yeah, 50 seater bus. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I we'll think that's the way. It goes. Push it out, let it go, <sighs> see where it takes us. I appreciate you having me on. No, you're welcome. That's Licia Troughton, Dr. Licia Troughton, Alberta in Canada, the authoress, the artist responsible for the Linen Memorial.